everybody. This is a quick uh, SOP for our customers on how to go ahead and get their original bypass gripper set up on an NGC Haas machine. So you're gonna need two things. The first thing is you're gonna need your original bypass gripper case uh, or kit, which should come in this case right here. And then you're gonna need two of these little neodymium magnets. Um, any magnet or magnetic surface will work. Uh, we're gonna use these to temporarily bypass uh, the safety don't, uh, on our CNC machine. So don't worry, we're not gonna, this isn't something permanent, we're just gonna do this temporarily to accurately set up our original bypass gripper. So we're gonna start by taking uh, two magnets or just metal blocks of your choice, and you're gonna insert them into, uh, right underneath the proximity sensors. So there's a proximity sensor on most modern Haas machines. Um, if there's two doors, there's gonna be one on each side. We put one there and one there, and then at this point, we're ready to continue the process. All right, now that you have the magnets in place to uh, uh, bypass your machine interlocks, go ahead and make sure the doors are open uh, and make sure the machine's in a ready to run state. The next thing you're gonna do is go into the Haas MDI uh, and you're gonna type in the tool number that you want. Um, so in this case, we're gonna put the uh, gripper on tool number 18. We let the machine change to that position and now we're gonna go to MDI, make sure there's nothing here. So we hit erase program. And then we're gonna spindle orient it to the correct position. It should already be there because it just completed a tool change, but we're gonna put it here anyways. M19 R0.0, .0. hit enter to input that in MDI. We're gonna hit start. And then the drive dogs, if this is done correctly, should not move because you're always gonna do a tool change on an umbrella style tool changer or also on a side mount style tool changer in the R0 position. Uh, one thing to note, on an umbrella style tool changer, you're going to be, uh, your drive dog should be left to right, and on a side mount, they should be front to back. So we'll show you those now. Sorry for the dirty machine here, but uh, I have the camera placed directly under the spindle. Uh, you should have M19 R0.0 still active. Um, just so you have a frame of reference, my hand here, this is the front of the machine. Because we have the uh, doors bypassed, we can leave the spindle oriented. You can see as I push here, it's not wanting to give, which is exactly what we want to see. So with that, we can continue the process and we're going to mount using the two 1032 screws on the bottom of the spindle. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna to wanna to pull out uh, the block here. This is gonna have two 1032 screws in it, as well as a quarter inch air fitting. And we're gonna put those right in the position where they go into these two 1032 screws that are designed for this exact purpose uh, or for a 90 degree head. So I'm just gonna go and put these in position using the included Allen key in your original bypass gripper kit. And then we're just gonna loosely tighten these for now. And you can see that's what the bypass block looks like mounted to the bottom of the spindle. Uh, note that some of the newer versions of the bypass block don't have this curvature here. Either version will work. Uh, the newer version is just gives a little bit more clearance for side mount tool changers, but they both work in all situations. All right, so now I'm gonna jog the spindle down to get a little bit better access and explain where your airline should ideally be routed from. So our system is a little more complicated because we have it set up to where we can switch over to uh, a miss loop system, but you're not gonna probably have to worry about that. Uh, the first thing that you probably wanna know is that if you take off this plate right here, beneath it, most of the time on NGC machines, Haas has already run an airline. That airline is usually a six millimeter one, and it's usually red. What you can often do is do exactly what we've done. Uh, go ahead and get a small piece of uh, six millimeter or a quarter inch airline, and then use a coupler to extend it to the length you need. There are conveniently two little notches that you can pass airlines through. You can make it the exact perfect length to go and be directly plumbed in to your bypass block, and that's how you're going to get air to the actual bypass block for your bypass gripper operation. If you are using the line that's already uh, routed for through air blast on your Haas machine, it's gonna be kind of a dull red color. You can see that's uh, right here in this case. And then what we did is we just linked it directly back via this Y with a plug on the end over to one of our instant solenoid kits uh, to the left of it. That's actually doing the control. So you can do this uh, either if you already have the through air blast option, or sorry, the uh, this auxiliary air blast option that blasts from the side of your tool on a Haas machine, um, or 
through one of our uh, kits, our instant solenoid kits, to make it fast and easy. Uh, if you are going to use existing solenoids on the machine, you want to make sure that they're always vented and not simply an on-off solenoid, because if you have only an on-off solenoid and not a true vented solenoid, like you find on our instant solenoid kits, then you get the risk of the gripper opening very slowly and slowing down the dwell times in your automated system. This is a quick aside here. If you are setting up with our instant solenoid kit, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to plumb in to the Flows Energize line. It's unlabeled on this one because it's an in-house prototype unit, but that's this line on the right here. And then you're going to want to plug off the line to the left, which is your flows normally. What's gonna happen is when uh, you get either the M code signal from uh, the machine or you get the override signal from the pendant, the solenoid will turn on, shifting the air pressure from coming to here to coming to here. And because it's a five channel solenoid, it'll also vent properly when that happens. All right, so now that we're back at the machine, we just wanna double check that our M19 R0 is still applied. So I'm just gonna hit apply again. I'm gonna go into jog mode. I'm gonna raise this back up. Just to confirm you're on the correct tool number. In this case, we're installing on tool 18. And remember, you never wanna put the original bypass gripper on tool one because that can lead to a tool change error. So from here we have our air is plumbed in and ready to go. In this case, it's controlled um, by either our M code, in our case, M55, or controlled by our gripper uh, left-hand side override pendant um, for our instant solenoid kit. And from here, we're ready to go ahead and start the actual assembly process. So you're gonna need, uh, before anything, the uh, correct holder that comes with your original bypass gripper kit. You're gonna make sure the pull stud is tightened on and then it's perfectly fine and normal that it doesn't have uh, the actual uh, Allen key here. That's uh, kind of how they ship standard. So what we're gonna do from there, we're gonna uh, make sure that we go ahead and hit reset. We're gonna take one of our magnets off. And we're gonna load into uh, the, the actual spindle with the logo facing us. From there, we're going to take a small magnet and we're gonna put it back to make the machine think that the doors are now closed. Go back into MDI, and we're gonna make sure that we're M19 R0 one more time. This step is very important to make sure that everything is properly oriented for the tool change. From here, we're gonna take the actual gripper unit and we're going to put it into place. We wanna generally start with this threaded stud that actually passes the air through it with the shoulder flush to the top surface here. Um, the way that the actual sealing is handled in the bypass block it's not a metal on metal seal. There's actually a small rubber compression pad and that rubber compression pad is what should be doing all the sealing, sealing action for you. Uh, because of the way this is assembled, we have to basically uh, clamp onto the tool holder from the outside. So this is where you're going to need the second uh, smaller Allen key that also comes with your bypass gripper set. And that's gonna let you adjust these two external set screws on the gripper unit. So here we need to be 100% sure in MDI, M19 R0 has still been activated. And this is where we're going to go. And we're gonna shimmy the gripper upwards. Now, if you're seeing it's a little bit difficult like it is in this situation, this is where you're gonna to wanna to loosen off these two bolts. So I'm gonna loosen these two bolts and see now it's a lot smoother. So we're gonna push this all the way up and, uh, and we're gonna to try to leave uh, you can leave between zero and an eighth inch gap between the bottom of the tool holder and the, that gripper itself. And in this position, this is where we're going to want to tighten the actual gripper unit. And with everything in place, we make sure you can't rotate left to right here. This is where we're going to want to also tighten the bypass block. Because the, the bypass block has uh, a bronze sleeve bearing here that's a little bit larger diameter than the actual stud that goes into it. You have a little bit of give left to right. Uh, it should handle more than the variance you would see between uh, any different gripper or vacuum grabber combinations. So we're gonna tighten both of these and then we're gonna move to the step of actually dialing in the gripper for operation. So now that's set, you can see if I go to the instant solenoid kit here, just reach across, I turn it on, we can see it closes. There is a little bit of a leak, but we'll fix that in a few minutes here. So what we're gonna do from there is we're gonna grab a dial indicator and we're gonna indicate uh, the gripper face in 
in order to make sure that it's perfectly aligned to our x-axis. All right, from here, this is a little tip to make it much easier to dial in the gripper. Um, I'm just gonna walk you through this code that we manually inserted into MDI. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go M19 fiddle orient to uh, R0, so that's the tool change standard position. That's the uh, position we're gonna mount the gripper. We're gonna go into G91 for relative coordinates. Bear in mind, uh, we're already in imperial mode. We're gonna set the feed rate to 50, and then we're going to feed at that 50 rate in relative coordinates uh, right and left over and over and over, which is gonna make it very easy to dial in uh, our indicator and indicate the gripper in properly. All right, from here, we're going to go ahead and get the indicator set up on this uh, front flat face. Make sure everything's nice and steady. We're gonna set this appropriately. And then the point of adjustment is going to be these two uh, Allen keys right here and here. We're gonna very lightly back them off to where it doesn't drop the gripper entirely. In there. Okay. All right, now that our indicator is set up, we're gonna go into the MDI mode and make sure the gripper is uh, loosened off on these two Allen keys here and here. We're gonna hold the gripper. Keep in mind you need the magnets for the temporary door bypass. We're gonna hit start, and then basically we're going to slowly rotate this until the gripper is within an acceptable tolerance. Usually we aim for a couple thousandths of an inch. Once we're close, just go ahead and restart this here. Once we're close, we'll do a little bit of uh, tightening, just in the right ballpark. All right, now that we're nice and close, I'm gonna tighten off the gripper here. Be careful to adjust accordingly, because as you tighten it, just like calibrating a probe, you're gonna have to make some little micro adjustments. Here, there, I'm going to tighten the back Allen key. Check one more time. And now we're within a couple thou. So, really, if you're within uh, sweeping the inch and a half of the uh, front gripper plate, if you're within 10 thousands of an inch, that's going to be more than accurate enough. Uh, we and most customers, uh, as machinists, aim for usually a couple thou. So, now that that's all set, we're going to get our final tightening here. We're just going to want to get all those set screws firmly tightened, including the ones on the bypass block. Keep your indicator on there to make sure that as you tighten it, it doesn't move. And then this is the scary part, is going to MDI and for the first time hitting ATC forward. And as you can see, it worked exactly as intended. And now when we hit ATC reverse, and we'll change back to the gripper effect. And if you do everything in this order, everything should be perfectly aligned. Um, the only thing to note is that you wanna make sure that this gripper is on any tool slot, on an umbrella tool changer, or a side mount tool changer other than T1. Uh, you should also know that on all NGC machines, those two holes are specifically designed to create an anti-rotation feature. So as long as the gripper itself is properly clocked uh, to M19R0, you won't have any undue load placed on the spindle on any modern Haas machine. All right, so now that we have our gripper essentially fully functional, we just need to do a couple fine tweaks. It's already dialed in. As you can see, I can reach over here, bring in some solenoid kick, and turn it on, turn it off. Everything works perfectly there. 
So uh, what we're gonna do now is just adjust the actual air stud to make sure that we don't have any leaks. So we're just gonna take off our, our temporary bypass from the machine to, so it thinks the door is open. I'm gonna take that out. All right, now with the uh, spindle gripper out of the machine, we're gonna loosen off both of these two uh, set screws. And we're just gonna turn this counterclockwise a little bit. The stud can be a little bit difficult to turn sometimes. So we're just gonna gently grab some pliers and we're gonna move it back out about half a turn at a time. Put it back in the spindle. Turn the air on. And whenever we're getting a severe leak right here, we're gonna continue doing the adjustment process. So I'm gonna take it out again. You can be very gentle with the device grips uh, or any pliers to move this out. Move it out about a half a turn. Try again. It's still a very minor leak, so we're just going to dust a little bit more. Right there. And that's what you want to hear. So it is going to have always a little bit of air that's able to escape through these Allen keys. Um, that's, or sorry, through these set screws rather. That is intentional. We don't want to fully seal off the system and create any, any uh, pressure differentials. So we can turn on the gripper again, and then that's exactly what you want to hear, it be kind of a, a light uh, leak. All right, that concludes uh, the, the install process for your bypass original spindle gripper on a Haas CNC machine. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach us at uh, sales at gimbalautomation.com.